Amen. Thank you, team. Thank you, team. You may be seated. Welcome, church. Good morning. Good morning. If you are online, welcome as well. If you don't know, my name is Joshua, and we are, uh, it's going to be a good morning. Amen? It has been already so thick with the presence of God. Uh, it's so good to worship together. Let's, uh, can you uh, locate a child near you, extend your hand toward them, we'll pray for our little ones to head downstairs and invite them. Lord, thank you for our children. Thank you for their teachers. Lord, thank you for your holy scriptures, upstairs and down. Lord, let us learn from you. Prepare all of our hearts and minds to learn, to be shaped by your truth and your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Kids, you may head downstairs. Before I, I invite Alan up here today, our, our guest preacher, we are. Um, I want to say two things, and I'll, I'll keep it short. I want to make sure I leave all the time. Two, only two short things, okay? Number one is, is on the personal note, that uh, my personal commitment, gratitude, and heart toward Alan, and I am so thankful to see Ty here this morning as well. That, <laughs> since I came back to Christ Church in 2005, there have been two men, two spiritual fathers, and I am so thankful to have been raised in a spiritual household as well, but two spiritual fathers. And I am committed to them, and I love them, and they have shaped, them, shaped me and, and my ministry, and I am so thankful, and I continue to be forever. There is something that we rarely talk about, and that is covenant. And I am thankful that I not only know them, I know their children, I know their grandchildren, and we have raised them together. The second part is our church. Our church our church's commitment to the design of God as it is revealed in Scripture for the church. That he provided apostles, elders, and deacons to steward the government of his people with himself, Jesus, as the chief apostle. We have recognized the gifting and authority through the apostleship of Alan for decades. And we trust him with the commission for the next generation through the laying on of hands. So with that, will we welcome Alan to the front. Come on up here. Thank you. Well done. Bless you. Are you going to come and sit later when we anoint you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow, what an occasion for us to be together. Uh, it just shows you how time goes so fast, doesn't it? Did you say amen or are you going to sleep? Yeah. Time travels quite fast and we're grateful to God for the testimony of this church. We're going to go into a very special occasion together where we recognize the next chapter of God's ministry for this church and for the way ahead in terms of the extension of his kingdom. But I want to just say a few things first before we go there uh, by way of, uh, from a personal point of view, uh, but I want to, that's my watch gun, just a moment. It's on English time and I've only got 25 minutes, so... That's, so if it goes over, it's because the clock stopped, <laughs> all right? In the Bible, there's a use of a word that is often overlooked, and the word is if. And if you look into the Scriptures, you'll find just under 1,600 times the word if is used. It's not to cheat us or anything. It's actually loaded. It brings us back to an accountability to who the Lord is because he invented languages. We know what happened at the Tower of Babel, but let me tell you, out of that darkness, when, G when God had to make the languages different, he created such diversity. It's incredible. So to use just in the English language or the American language, uh, to use just one word, if, is quite incredible. And you've probably never even thought about that. That is also true in ministry. And I'm going to give you a reason why I'm raising this in a moment, but I just want to tickle you a little bit 
with the reality that God is in the detail. Amen? And it's not all about us, it's about Him. And when it's about Him, we need to line up with what God is saying to us. And I found this. When God speaks, He doesn't say a lot. He says a little, but in the little is so much. Right? So when I use the word if, I'm deliberately using it in line with what we're about to undertake today in the recognizing of the extension of the ministry in this church, even to regions beyond. So if I give you an illustration, the scripture says this about faithfulness and obedience. If you, if you obey the commands of the Lord your God that I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. If, just a simple, simple little word. No one can say they don't know what that means. But then when it comes to divine partnership, if you remain in me and I remain in you, if you will bear much fruit, Apart from me, you can do nothing. John 15, 5. So what we're dealing with even today is not about self-reliance. It's not just about our capability. It's about the fact that if we will stay close to God, God will take care of what he's commissioned us for as a church as ministries, because we're all in some way in ministry. But when it comes to looking at apostolic initiative, I've got to be very clear about this. We've got to be sensitive to the voice of God. It's not about our talent. It's about our dependency on the voice of the Spirit. It's divine partnership. So when Jesus was about to ascend, As you heard last week, I heard it, I listened to it, and we heard about the anointing that he was bringing upon at least the fivefold ministries at that time, apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastor teachers, and he was commissioning them for the work of the kingdom to reach beyond the walls that they exist in. So the key will be not our talent, but our dependence, not our burnout, because it's too easy to burn out, to try to do everything to impress. That's not what we're about. We are humble servants. And then there's another use of this word, if. Many times, I haven't got the time to tell you the ball, I'm on a time limit. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Second Chronicles 7.14, you can read the rest. The issue is this, we can't do without the if. It's not about our talent, it's not about our gifting, it's not about our calling, it's about our dependency on the greatest shepherd and apostle of the universe, Jesus Christ himself and the Spirit of Christ. So it's not that we're trying to be clever, We have to be reminded that we can't save the world in our own breath. You hear what I'm saying? Otherwise, you die before your time. I'm still 21, by the way. And I I know you believe with me. I heard the amen when I said that. But if is all important in this respect, too, concerning integrity. There's a lack of integrity amongst churches all across the world. If anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as a holy, useful, for the holy, useful master. If anyone cleanses himself. So personal integrity is of the greatest importance. So when we begin to lay hands and to pray and to commission It's vital that we're in this together. 
It's vital that we pray for those in ministry. It's vital that the church maintains the integrity it's always had to reach the nations of the world. And since I've known you, I've experienced that in my lifetime. If you walk before me faithfully as David your father did, I will establish your throne. What does that mean? That little if means it's not just about the present. It's not just about the past. It's about the future. And as I was with David, so I will be with you if you walk before me faithfully. This is a tall order. It keeps you humble. It makes you sensitive. When people call you by a name that expresses your function, it's very important that you don't think you're bigger than anybody else. Because humility is the apron that you invest in when you move into apostolic ministry. So we have to encourage all of our leaders, all of our ministries, to come back to this weighty word, little word. You can't forget it. It's not complicated. It's about a dependency on God's voice and God's direction. And with that will come, as we've heard just earlier, the provision of the Lord. Well, I want to say something to you as a church. You're a beloved church. You're thought of highly, not least by me and my wife and the works, workers that we work with across the nations. You have a beautiful testimony of a heart reach into the nations. So it's with a heart of gratitude and deep reflection that I'm here today. I had plenty of things to do, but this had to take priority. For decades, we've walked together in the sacred calling of apostolic ministry, laboring side by side to the nations, touched by the power and the love of God. Together, we've witnessed God is faithful. I can remember those times you were going into nations, even with all the medicines and all the things that they needed, and how God provided, how God protected. It's been a wonderful story. And as a church, you need to be able to appreciate what has been achieved by so few to impact so many. Now, as we look to the future, this is crucial that we do so in the shadow of challenges that we have to overcome. Consider, first of all, what we've gone through with COVID. The season of COVID was a time of great distress across all the nations, including, including the United States and the United Kingdom. And it was a great distress for churches because they got caught up in the politic. Am I for this one or for that one? Masks or no masks? And everybody ignores this, but the church was rather simplistic. And it caused great chaos amongst the testimony of Christ, especially in the United States. It's very important that we see this. I listened to the wonderful presentation last Sunday, but I want to say this to you. COVID cost the churches in this nation very seriously. So we don't pass that on. It's a time of great distress for churches, particularly the USA, and we all are too aware of the divisions. No one talks about that. But you have to be truthful. The church of Jesus Christ is not perfect. And there were real trials that are not talked about, and divisions and struggles and most of them had what I said earlier, a political flavor to them. We're not into that. We are a people of the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And it's by God's grace we have emerged out of that season with fresh hope and renewed vision. Now, if you can't face the negative, you don't understand the positive. 
the miracle of God's provision that we're here today. Did you say amen? There was one person. Amen. Just, just nod the person next to you and tell them what that means. Are you there? So our desire then is to move forward. To see the old and the young, listen carefully because this is not always respected. To see the old and the young united in a holy dance together. You may have knowledge, but knowledge without wisdom will steal from you. I might not be able to run as fast as you, but I can score a few goals. I did that a few years ago when I turned 65, and I was watching the church football team being slaughtered, and I used to play very big football in the early days. You use the word soccer here, right? And in soccer, and I remember watching the, the young people falling over themselves, hurting one another, and so I took my coat off, and I creeped on the field, and I waited for my moment. I didn't run. I waited, and then the ball came right to my feet, and without me having to breathe too heavy, I scored a goal, <laughs> 65. <laughs> All I'm saying is you may have the energy, and you may have the knowledge, but God help us if we haven't got the wisdom, and I believe God has had this design so that the old and the young can be in the dance together. Its strength and its devotion to the kingdom is crucial. If it's all about church, well, we could play that at home, couldn't we? But it is about the extension of God's heart to reach the nations. So on this occasion, we will also acknowledge the significant moment of the laying on of hands. And we recognize the emergence of apostolic base in Minneapolis. It's not just about an apostle, that's important, but it's about an apostolic base. And my, 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 this church has truly proved to be apostolic. So in the significant moment of the laying on of hands, we want to declare, Father, we want to be true to what you said. Go into all the world and preach the gospel, right? Carrying a message of hope. That's what apostolic is all about. Now may God enhance the ministry resources that are available. You heard that in the testimony of the giving. And may there be existing lines of authority and relationships that have been forged over years. Okay? Did you hear that? Did that was that complicated? Could you smile and then I know that? Is that all right? The foundations have already been built by those who laid down their lives for the kingdom centuries ago. And here we are still, looking at what has been left for us to continue. And that's what it's all about. So I come to you today. Let's embrace the legacy that God has given us. It's not churchianity. It's the kingdom of God and the extension of his kingdom. I want to say something, if I may, to yourself. It's very important as we lay hands. It's a sacred calling. It's a calling of humility. Whatever might be the giftings, humility will always attract God's voice and God's entrustment. And whatever people might think about you, some people hate the thought of such things as apostles. But Jesus is the great apostle. And the Holy Spirit came to make sure that what he declared would continue to this day. So it's not a charge just to put a burden on you. It's a charge to stay sensitive and humble and open and most of all, if I had another half hour, I'd tell you about it. Most of all, honesty with humility. So if I had an apron, I'd give it to you. I don't have one. But I wear it every day. 
I'm here to serve as you are. And the lovely thing is this, we're in this together. I believe in bat and passing. Does that make sense in, in your English? I believe that with all my heart, we can move together. People say, well, does that mean Josh is going to lead the church? No chance. It means we're going to extend our reach and we're going to run together. And for some while now, we have talked heart to heart. And sometimes I've, said, I've given you some bitter herbs. It's only medicine, right? So, so much sweetness in America, you know, so many sweets. And I'm sensitive to sweets. Don't tell Betty, I hope she's not listening. <laughs> but um, sometimes you've got to have some honest exchange, and that's what they're for, iron to sharpen iron. And I want the church to know that, that he's not on his own, we're together. Do you hear me? But we must be with humility, with honesty, with availability to obey God's direction. It's not a badge of honor. It's an apron. I wish it was, well, you know, it, look at Jesus. Be it far from you, said Peter, for you to wash my smelly feet. Well, I put the word smelly in. <laughs> but dusty, you know what it's like in the heat and the dry dust. And here's Jesus with an apron. He's the savior of the world. He's the apostle of apostles. But at the same time, he could speak to Peter and tell him, get behind me, Satan. For the way he was thinking was not according to the will of the Father. And that's important in apostleship. With humility, we have to adjust. With humility, we have to speak honestly. Don't, don't flavor the thing. When we have to deal with issues, we deal with them. Otherwise, we're weak and we're not at all able to walk with honesty and in truth. I like the way the Apostle Paul spoke to other apostles when he told them that he didn't think they were doing right. For example, Peter. Peter, you're too legalistic. When the Jewish contingency comes, you forget the Gentiles. And here he is. I love that about the Apostle Paul. When he says, all Asia has left me, welcome to the club. It doesn't all go right. <laughs> all Asia has left me. The man pioneered the whole thing. So welcome to apostleship. I charge you to model humility. Because then God will protect you. Even from the insanity of others. He really will. And there will be moments... When you speak to you and you can't get your words out because your tears are flowing. Because he's directing your path. It's very real. They didn't teach us this in the Bible college. Honestly, they didn't. The church, half the church doesn't know what apostleship is. Jesus is the apostle. And still has commissioned ministries to go over the wall and to reach further into the nations. Be careful how you build. Respect other people's foundations. I'm meeting this all the time because I'm helping younger ministries to come into their place. And I'm finding sometimes they keep upsetting one another because they don't make room for growth. They don't make room for extension. So by the grace of God given me, I've laid a foundation says the Apostle Paul, as a wise master builder and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. We recognize those that have gone before. I recognize how favored you've been over the last so many decades. I recognize it. Are you hearing me? I recognize it. The giftings and the callings and the reach that you've had because of the giftings and callings that have served amongst you. You're a blessed church. You have a good testimony. Don't compromise it. Let's honor one another. Let's work together to see the extension of God's kingdom. I'm going to ask if we could set up for the anointing of you as an apostle. 
and those who are with you, it'd be good to have the chair here so everybody can see if that's possible. And those who have come to stand with you, and Beth, if Beth would come as well. If, are you there, Beth? I couldn't see you. Well, well done, hiding in the back row, Beth. Okay. And then could you call the brothers that have come amongst you to be with you and witness? Just make room for Ty because he's going to anoint with oil. All right, Ty, when you're ready. Why don't we stand and reach out? A blessing, reach your hands forward with us. This is a wonderful moment. Yes. For us to be here together. Yes. To carry on the things that you have designed from the beginning. Yes, Lord. But from the days even of the calling together of this church and this body, Lord, yes. you have been faithful. Thank you. Thank you. You have been good and Thank kind you. to us. Thank you. And Lord, Lord, you've allowed us to go through yes. different trials and tribulations but God you have been with us through yeah. them all yes you have and so Lord is our heart to continue say we want to continue on in that which you have ordained for us Lord God Amen. to reach Lord this community this people this this town Lord God yes. this area yes. but also to be faithful to you to reach into the nations Thank you, Lord. for you have been the one to give us the commission Hallelujah. to do so. That's true. And Lord, how do we build unless you give us those who will help lead? Yes. And so, Lord God, we just anoint together. Yes. As a body. Thank you, we Lord. We anoint. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. In the office of apostleship. Hallelujah. According to your Thank word. You. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, yes, Josh. Lord. Hallelujah. Joshua, mm. you've been called again. Ah. Now to the apron, now to the service, ah. even as you have known mm. the service now into a greater mm. service. Yes. Again, not into a promotion, mm. but instead yeah. to harder work, <laughs> Lord. And that we know and recognize and we bless you in it. Yes, we we say we stand together. Yes. As your church, yes. the anointing of our brother, yes. Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Amen. Lord. Amen. Amen. Do you pray? You? Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Pray. Lord, we stand in affirmation of what you've already done. Yes. We can't call, but what you have anointed. Mm -hmm. God, we thank you now as we stand with yeah. Joshua in the next chapter of his path and his journey. We pray in the name of Jesus, dear God, that you continue to keep him humble, seeking relationships, crying for those <clears throat> that you only cry for. We thank you, God, for this humble man of God and those that you have wrapped around him to help be his foundation. But most of all, you, Jesus Christ, yeah. our Lord and our Savior, we thank you, dear God, for now covering him with yeah. this new mantle, dear God, a mantle from his birth in his mother's womb. You called him and anointed and designed him for this purpose. And we thank you that he's been faithful thus far to now receive this mantle and go further and now bless the nations, dear God, the diverse nations, dear God. Thank you for his heart. Thank you for his heart and those that you've put around him, dear God. And I pray you continue to bless him and his wife, dear God, and his family, dear God, with this new mantle. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I give you a particular gift for this season. 
and it is the gift of discernment. You have a big heart and I'll give you big eyes. And you'll perceive that which is right and that which is wrong. Not because you know it all, but because you remain sensitive to my voice and to my direction. No weapon formed against you shall prosper in the will of God. And the people said, Amen. 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 Well done. I'm going to get up now. Hallelujah. I'm going to get you to, I'm going to say one more thing and get you to respond with a close. You're going to say something? Yeah, yeah. Microphone. Come here. Let me come out your way. If you know me at all, you know that <clears throat> it's not often that I voluntarily grab a microphone and start talking to a bunch of people. <laughs> but there are moments when I feel like I have to say something. And this is one of those moments. I just, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. There are so many people in this room who have been parents to us whether actual biological parents or spiritual parents. And actually, our biological parents have been our spiritual parents as well, which is such a gift. But so many people in this room have been parents to us. And I, maybe as a teenager, didn't fully appreciate that. <laughs> the number of people looking out for me <laughs> who called us out when we were being stupid. <laughs> To have Ty and Kelly and Alan, and I actually hope Betty's watching. You said you hoped she wasn't. I hope she is. I think she will be. <laughs> and all of our off. parents here is such a beautiful, beautiful thing. And if we can love God's people half as well as you have yeah. loved us, they will be blessed. And that's, that's my heart and my prayer, that as we move into deeper ministry, that we will absorb just a fraction of the gifting that you have shown and blessed us with. So thank you. Amen. Amen. If to the congregation you are witnesses to this calling, our prayer is that you will support his servant with your prayers and encouragement and partnership in the ministry. Just as the apostleship is a calling, it's also a shared mission that requires the unity of the body of Christ. To you, Josh, may you walk in humility and truth, faithfulness. In truth, it's important because you don't like to hurt anybody. But you've got to tell the truth if you really love, okay, to discern in that respect. May you honor those who have gone before you and build with care upon their work. And may you embrace the way of the cross, following the master wherever he leads. And may you always maintain that deep and profound love that God has put in you. You serve selflessly and you proclaim the gospel boldly. I wish you'd sing a bit more than you used to. But, uh, <laughs> and may your ministry always reflect the heart of Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve. Our Father, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for this generational dance. Help us to enjoy every moment and be there for one another. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the people said, Amen. 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 Do you want to respond, Josh? I love the family of God. We are brothers and sisters for eternity. We are forever family. And no matter how we serve, we must always remember that we are children with a wonderful heavenly father, with an older brother who is our king, our savior. I love Jesus dearly, and he sent us the Holy Spirit that wherever we are, we are able to serve the kingdom of God, that the Holy Spirit is with us 
in everything we do if we would only listen and follow him. I love you, church. I love the church of God. And I accept this and receive these words and I will carry them and I will remember them and I will listen to them over and over again. There is nothing (laughs) that I love doing more with my free time than studying the word of God. And this was a word delivered today. I thank you to all my brothers who came today from across the Twin Cities and even from India as well. (laughs) Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your provision. Thank you that you call us and you don't leave us alone but you set us like diamonds in a perfect setting in a family. Thank you for this family. Thank you for its generosity. Thank you that we are both prophetic and missional. And Lord, I ask, test us in our generosity. Send us orphans, Lord. Show us where people are that need this family to come alongside, to grow. Bless each and every person here, every person that is within the sound of my voice. Bless us as we go. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.